Hello, and welcome to another student simulation walkthrough. Today, we are going to be going through the Mimic Social simulation, and that is a simulation that is uh, typically paired with social media textbooks uh, and specifically for social media courses. Um, just going to go right into the screen share today. I'm here at the Stukent Products page where we'll start. Again, this is a walkthrough more for professors, lecturers, um, administrators, anybody who is considering utilizing this for their course. Um, students who are checking this out, you're obviously welcome to check this as well. Um, it's just going to be a pretty basic walkthrough. And I would say most of the time is going to be spent talking about the mechanics of the simulation and how to better integrate it into a, into a course syllabus, specifically those that deal with uh, social media and digital marketing introductions. So, so to start, um, I'm actually going to share a little bit of kind of how I've used this in the past. Um, you know, right now, there's since even since I started teaching the simulation, there have been a ton of new books that Stukin has published, including my own on content marketing. And I actually think this is one of the better simulations. Um, social media, this is both paid and organic social, and you can utilize it for um, all sorts of different classes. Um, I have only used this for social media classes so far, but I will be integrating it for my introduction to digital marketing course in the fall. And I'm considering implementing this into a content marketing course, but um, I also have a, the content marketing simulation that I'm doing. So I don't want to overload students. And I definitely would not recommend more than one simulation per course, just because it is fairly time consuming. And it's something that, that um, it's difficult to rationalize sharing, uh, having students do more than the work that's required here um, in the simulation, in addition to studying for an exam um, or doing any other sort of final project. So for now, I'll share, just kind of show what I have here. Um, this, is, this is my sample syllabus here. Um, I thought I had put each week kind of where the mimic uh, where the mimic simulation uh, due dates were for each round, but I remember originally I did have it set up where in every single week I would outline which round was due. And when I first did that, I realized that that was kind of hard because some students, obviously like a lot of students, uh, prefer to procrastinate. And while I try to avoid that um, just for their own good, I realized after this first time running through it that um, that's, you know, that can only really be a recommendation that I make. And you know, I, I wasn't going to grade them on every individual round. Um, I was just going to grade them on their total results. So um, what I did here is I set up the simulation to be due really the last actual week of class before we had a, we have a study day at our school and that always seems to fall on the day that I have class. Uh, and then there's the, the final presentations, which is for a final project, not related to Mimic. And so the way I set it up is this is an 11 week course. And I would introduce this right after the midterm exam. And I would tell students, okay, I recommend doing two to three rounds a day or two, sorry, two to three rounds a week with a, um, with the idea that you're going to be completing this um, kind of at, with about two weeks to go in the course. Uh, I gave them a starting date where they were not able to access it before a certain time in the course. And after that, they would, they'd be ready to go. So again, this is a social media specific course. Um, the reason I didn't open it earlier in the semester or let students do it from the beginning it's really because I wanted to get through a couple of key topics and I didn't want them to go so far ahead and then come back to me and say, hey, I didn't have a chance to actually learn this. I thought I could just do this on my own. Um, and also, this is for an MBA level course, this um, syllabus. Uh, I've also used this for an undergrad course, and um, I do recommend going week by week there. And it's really hard to um, 
just because students in the undergrad course don't usually know what they're getting themselves into. Most of them have not run social media for a brand in the past. And even in that, you know, even knowing that here in 2022 and, and beyond, uh, most students, undergrad students haven't actually run a, a Facebook page, like even one for themselves. And that's a big part of this simulation. So uh, just make sure to integrate that walkthrough yourself as a professor in the course. So I'm going to go over to go back to the website here, just so we can go ahead and dig in. Um, really quick, uh, I'm using in this in right now. So I've only used two books to go with this right now, and that is the Essentials of Social Media Marketing book here by Michelle Chirello, uh, and also Social Media Marketing Principles and Strategies by Stephen and Bart. Uh, the difference between them is the social media marketing text, which is the one that you see reflected in that last syllabus I showed. That's a little bit more academic, more conceptual. There's a lot more um, overviews of, of different um, marketing principles. The whole consumer to company, company to consumer information flow, for example, is there. You'd have different types of um, media, owned, earned, paid, things like that. Whereas uh, Chirello's text is a little bit more, a little bit more uh, practical, and and I don't mean that in the, that it's like way better. It's just it, it deals more with everyday uh, situations, and you know, like there's an individual chapter for each big social network, and it deals with um, like laying out smart goals and uh, and also like the 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 timeline of a social media strategy, things like that. Honestly, the two of them together do pretty well. Um, and actually at right this moment in a class that I'm using, a separate class I'm using, I'm using my content marketing strategies textbook for this. Um, you get a lot of the same overview. Um, the only difference is that my content marketing courseware is a little bit more based around development of actual content, whereas those other two textbooks are really more focused on social media strategy and the principles that go with them. So there, there are some key differences. It really depends on what, what your core themes of your course are. Um, I personally am, would recommend the social media marketing from Stephen and Bart first and foremost. So if I had to pick one, it would, it would be that one for sure. So um, let's, let's go ahead and dig into the simulation itself. I'm going to be going in through the a student view. This is where I am right now. Um, when you start, you know, and you're on round one, there's 10 rounds again, remember. Um, it's out of the executive summary in the Bowie Supply Company. Uh, it's important to remind students that this is a B2C situation, not a B2B specifically. B2C, this means that they're, they're going to be creating content. They need to understand that they're going to be creating content on social media that both needs to be value driving and self-promotional. And I've, I've done this simulation myself, I think now three times, and each time I've tried it a little bit differently. And whenever I do it myself, I've tried a lot of different variables and just seeing what works with the algorithm. And honestly, it does a really good job of, of kind of looking for content that will drive value. And if you don't do any of that and all of your content is just strictly self-promotional, uh, you're not gonna get a lot of results. And, you know, if there is one, there's one key, key takeaway for students as they go into this, it's that one, they need to read all of this stuff, they need to read the executive summary, they need to, they need to read the weekly memos. And they need to really read the details about their products, their market, and their budget. Right. So you have a weekly budget of $5,000. Like you're supposed to spend all of that. And I mean, they give you a lot of tips and tricks going through this, to be perfectly honest. There's, there's really no, there's, there's nothing left to the imagination here. It's pretty straightforward. And the only thing that isn't outlined particularly well here, which is on purpose, is that they don't tell you the proper content mix between paid and organic social media. But again, that's for the students to, to, to kind of figure out as they go through this. I also would recommend 
telling students that they need to allocate a lot of time to creating the actual content. And that one post, like creating one value driving post and one paid post with one paid post going with all $5,000 per week in the budget is not going to get them the results they want. And it's not going to get them a, an A in the assignment. Absolutely. Um, from what I've seen, while there's, there is a variance in the amount of posts that students can create, um, I noticed that anytime a student created less than 10 posts per week, they did not do well. Um, now, you know, on the other end, if you do 500 posts a week, you know, that's, there's not a big difference in, in outcome between 500 posts and say, I don't know, 50 posts. Um, I don't know if there's a sweet spot. I think for me, the single best round I ever ran was one where I think I did a total of 20 posts and five of those were paid and, um, and they were different types of posts. So just an overview and, and kind of what to consider telling students up front. So you're going to do the walkthrough, go through the products, making sure that you, and if you're a student, making sure that you understand what these products are. Um, not only what the costs are, because there is a more of a traditional business and accounting aspect of this, you know, how much are you spending versus how much are you bringing in, but also look, like, look at the products and understand the market as well. I kind of feel as this is just a, a, a mix and match game where you need to mix and match the proper audiences that you're targeting, the proper products that you're promoting and the proper channels where you are actually publishing your posts. Oh, and also like what the, is in the content of the posts too. There's a lot going on. Um, understanding all seven of these, uh, all, all seven of these personas are, is really important. And it's not that you need, to, like, there's no, uh, there's no science. There's no, specific science and like math equations that you can do to figure out where you would say, okay, seaside Sally wants a bag for the beach. Her income is between 20 and 30,000. But when I look at the bags, you know, I want to give her a travel bag, but it's a little expensive. So maybe I'll just go for the tote or the pouch because they're cheaper. Like, sure. Like you can do that. And because you're looking at, because you're generally looking at the values of, you know, what, what can this audience afford? What are they actually looking to spend? What I would not recommend doing is saying, okay, you know, she spends, what, what will I do if I promote the travel bags and, and, and you know, actually create these numeric uh, formulas to try and uh, predict how much you're going to get out of this. I mean, people do that. That's what data analysts are for and, and these um, forecasters are for. Uh, that's not this course. So this course is strictly about learning how to um, create content, promote content, properly target it to the right audience, properly um, allocate funds, understanding the products that you are selling and promoting. And then also being able to look at analytics between each round, seeing what worked, what didn't work and updating as you go. So um Analytics is a good area too, because you can see the background about what all of the social media accounts have. Um, I recommend, I obviously recommend looking at this. I mean, don't, you know, you don't want, you don't want the number of page likes, for example, to dictate how much content you're putting out there. Um, I would, you know, instead you want to make sure that your, your age group and your gender ratio are matching with the market that you're going after. So back to school, Mindy, if her age is between 18 and 26 and she's female and we go back to the analytics for the social media and you say, okay, 18 to 50 over more than 50% female. Okay, great. That works. Um, you know, to be perfectly honest, there's not a, it, there's not just a, it's not like one, one audience or one persona per per social network, I mean, I'll, like most of them are going to fit within the Facebook one, for example, there's a, there are, there's some fundamental differences and you need to look at all of these different social network accounts to really understand. Like, for example, you probably don't want to bother targeting, targeting Pinterest to any of the male groups. Now in recent years, that's changed. There's some data that came out last year in the 
um, mid pandemic that the number of men using Pinterest has actually grown 50%. Um, that's great. But again, this simulation was built a couple of years ago. I mean, this isn't something that this is, this is a, exactly what it is. It's a simulation. It is not supposed to um, actually show you what would happen today. Um, so um, that's kind of an overview on, of, of that. And then the other thing on the analytics is making sure that you look at the ideal number of posts. I mean, you don't need to post on Pinterest 27 times per day. I mean, that's a lot of content. Um, I never posted more than once on Pinterest per day. Now, having said that, I will say up front, Pinterest is a, is a pretty high converting um, social network in this simulation, just to, you know, just to give you a little tidbit. Um, meanwhile, you know, you have things like LinkedIn, it, yeah, you should never post more than once. And it's hard to, it's hard to sell that, you know, YouTube, you, you, knowing that they're all videos, one to three. Okay. There's a, a nice broad, broad range there. But it's under, it's important to know ahead of time before you go and create your posts, like, you need to look at these social media summary analytics, um, for sure. Um, then you have your budget. That's just an overview of how you're supposed to be spending your money. Pretty basic. Um, it is important to understand that there is a budget for a product and uh, for promotion and product. Um, there is a difference there. It's not five thousand dollars on actual, just you know, social media ads. Um, when I would break down the budget, I usually would, if I recall correctly. I, I would allocate probably 60% to promotion normally. I mean, sometimes it would go up to as much as 80%, but it also depended on how many videos I was doing. Videos are a big um, money suck, to be perfectly honest. Um, each week, there's going to be a weekly memo. It's important to look at that and follow the direction of what is provided there. That is really going to be important because they are going to adequately direct you to success. And then you have the posts. I already had created a couple. Um, so this is intended to be kind of your, your buoy social media aggregator, the mimic social media aggregator. It looks similar to maybe something you'd see on Hootsuite or Sprout, a little bit different, but it has all of the same basic things. You would select where you're posting, like you would click that. Um, it's an obvious option. Do you want to promote yes or no? And then you're done. Um, and then when you go over to Buoy, into this post, you would actually create the content. So say I wanted to um, write something, maybe not even an overly, maybe not a promotional post. I'm just going to do a value driving post. Um, I love seeing our backpacks out in the, I'm just making this up, wilderness. Um, and then you see, okay, like there's an option to add a photo or actually any type of attachment, I should say. And the thing here is that there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, some of them have costs. You know, if you want to create an infographic, yeah, it costs about 100 bucks. If you want to do, this is a, a video with $3,000. So you see that the price can go, can get high quick. But then there's also, you know, $3, $3 photos, um, $100 photos, it's $5, not, not that, um, not that crazy. And um, I, I also would, would strongly recommend um, looking at, looking at things in their categories, they have different folders, right? So they have, I just, I wanted to take a picture of the wilderness. So I'm going to look at uh, pictures, right? Let me see if I can find it in the wilderness. So we'll do we'll do that one. It's free. Um, you know, maybe you want to post this on to Instagram first. No, I don't want to take that off of Facebook. No, um, that's another key thing. And maybe that's all I want to do for that one. You know, I want to schedule that. Um, you know, they do provide ideal times to post content, but to be perfectly honest, I, I haven't seen a big difference in that. It, the, the important thing is just not to be posting everything at once. 
Um, if you schedule it so that it's everything goes at the exact same time and the exact same day, obviously you're not going to do so hot. It's more about spreading out the content over the course of the week. So I already had a post. Maybe I want to go and I want to post it on uh, Thursday the 19th at noon. Great. Go ahead and schedule it. I already had one scheduled for Monday at noon. And uh, that was it. Then if you want to promote one, we will go over one that actually gets promoted here. Um, we'll say, what do we say? Um, you know, we're having a um, flash sale, perhaps. Um, 50% off. I, I don't want to actually put the discount in there because I want to start with the graphic. And sometimes you do want to start. I would, I would actually recommend... Uh, telling students to start with the graphic if they're going to have one to start with the media you know i would recommend being spending very little time on on text only posts very little time maybe one a week and when that happens it needs to be really something powerful it cannot be um anything that that could at all have you know have uh, a, a media to go with it Right, we'll just go to the 20% off thing. Um, flash sale 20, because you want to be consistent here too. Um, the simulation will know if you say 40% and the graphic says 20, like you'll get dinged for that. And that's just a normal consistency thing. Like that's, if, if that happens with somebody and you can look at the student's re results, like consistent messaging across um, content is pivotal. 20% off. The entire store today only. Again, I might do these differently, but I'm just doing this in the interest of time. And you can change your time. Maybe I'll do it then. Um, now, when I schedule this, I have to, I, you, you'll notice it won't let you schedule it when, without picking one. Um, you know, say I want to go to Facebook now. A couple other things to notice, and I, I, there's one thing I haven't seen yet. I, I have not. Um, one thing I have not seen a difference in is what is like the people, like the actual creative of the image versus the group that I'm promoting it to. So right now, you know, if I go back to um, the, the people here, um, and I look at the market and I say, okay, I want to promote something. I want to promote something to our most wealthy audience. And I think that's hipster mommy. It might be is it this guy, Dave Packer Tom. It might be up and comer. We'll just stick with, all right, we want to advertise to hipster mommy, Cammy. She's only 5% of the market, 32 to 45, but she's got some nice income, female, you know, those are interests. You're essentially going to be matching these up. Like I, I would actually recommend like having a separate tab open with the specific audience that you're going for. Because if you're all over the place with your targeting, it's not going to work well. So you have, your, you have all this stuff, right? You go back to the posts. This is, you know, to keep it here. Uh, um, what did it say she was? Um, you know, I want to make sure that I'm promoting this on the right channel. Uh, but I also wanted to go, maybe I wanted to go after a guy um, because that was a guy wearing a backpack and it looks cool. Um, so maybe we want to go with day packer Tom instead, um, 18 to 26 male. Okay. He wants a multi-purpose bag. So he's very specific. Like we could promote a multi-purpose bag and it would, and it would probably do a little bit better. But again, this is just for example, All right? Go back to the post. Um, for now we'll say Instagram and I do want to promote and then you essentially will want to make it so that the ages are exactly the same. Then you can add in all of the same interests. I just went in and essentially copied exactly the interest. Like I made this so that the new audience was exactly the, the, the group that I was going for. And I actually created one for up and come Raj already. Um, right. And they say, I want to throw that in there. Now, that might not be the best match, but I just want to do it again in the interest of time. I've done that. And now I, you know, if you also, if you remember, um, one other thing that you need to do is making sure that you had selected a, um, 
a budget. And that's the other thing that goes into this. Like I, I had selected a budget of, uh, what did I select? There we go. Um, you know, my budget that I had picked was, what? it was 500 bucks. And so that's, you know, it's only $500, not that much. Um, the good thing too about this is when you schedule it, you're not, it's not going to run. It's going to, all of your posts that you schedule for the week are going to be listed here. But then you're ready to go. You know, I won't, I won't take any more time here creating these. Go to run simulation. You go look at the estimated spend and you have funds available. Yes, I have lots of funds left. I get it. I'm supposed to spend it all. Then you run it. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that every other round is an analysis round. So that you're going to look through and they'll ask you to answer these questions. I, as a professor, have never actually used the answers to these questions to, um, to give them a grade. It's great for the weekly review where you could say one week you have to actually do the round and maybe that's a pass fail. Second week, you need to do the analysis and do the responses to the questions. That could be points based on responses to these. The only challenge is that sometimes it, it, can, be, it can be time consuming. So you look at the post analytics and see what worked. Facebook, nothing, because it didn't do anything. Here's your uh, Instagram performance. Okay. Um, man, a lot of followers made some revenue. 204 conversions. Great. Right. There's all your data. This is what, how the breakdown by posts. Again, very similar to Insta actual Instagram. To me, I really like the analysis here. Um, they give you, I mean, Sukin does a great job of providing all of this data for you. The only difference is that, honestly, most companies aren't this sophisticated where it, it can be hard to match up your, to match up your revenue. Now, obviously with a larger B2C e-commerce brand, you're going to be able to tie that revenue together. But um, I, I've, I've always found it really fascinating that, um, you know, you can immediately see the revenue. I personally, you know, I, I have plenty of clients who will, um, who have this set up, but I would say 80% of them do not. So, um, but yeah, so there you go. You know, you got a bunch here. You can look at where, um, you know, where you are in the course and, uh, you know, 38 out of 38, because all my other students already did it. Um, and, you know, that's about it. Um, after that, you know, the round's over. And I believe um, it makes you submit these, to be perfectly honest, before you can go on to the next round. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it for the walkthrough. Um, again, this, I mean, you just saw me spend a couple of minutes, create just a couple of posts. And if, if students asked, hey, how long does this course take? Does the does each week take take? I would estimate that's really you know the way I answer it is it's as much as you put into it. I wouldn't recommend anything under an hour. If you spend one hour putting together posts, reading all the content, understanding what's going on, that's going to get you probably less than ten posts. And the good thing is, with each post, it takes a little bit less time. So it's not like it's going to be ten posts an hour. Meaning ten hours equals hundred posts. Um, I mean, you can get it down to a science in terms of the actual building of the posts. And I think the most I've ever created in a single week was what, 50? I think I said 50, 50 to 60. And I mean, I, I, mean, I knew what I was doing because it was my second time through. And I think I took a total of two and a half hours. So it's not, not a big deal. It's not that time consuming for students, but it is important that they know that it's going to be something where they can't just cruise through, publish a couple of posts and be done. Um, they're going to be in for a rude awakening and considering all the students are essentially um, ranked against each other. I mean, the people that put in the most time and energy and who actually understand how to match up the audiences with the platforms and the products and the creatives those are going to be the ones that do the best. And the way I broke down the results is I set a floor. I think I set a floor of 80%. So as long as you created all 10 rounds, you were at least going to get a B minus. And then I segmented the, the results of actual, the way I, I had to do some of my own weighted averages. I mean, the good thing about this is that, and I won't go into this right now is that you can actually 
um, look at the responses and, and, and you can download a grading spreadsheet, which I do recommend checking out. Um, but you know, you look at the course rankings and again, this is as a student. So you don't see who's who you don't see names. You know, this is me because I just did two posts. Uh, but you look at the differences here, right. In the rankings, like I, I personally weighted a couple of these differently. They rank the student ranks these based on a variety of factors. I think the final number is simply revenue. That being the number one, but I, when my course, I do a lot of talking about B2B and the, the value of um, value generating content. And so for me, I actually would take, I would weigh the revenue pretty highly. I think it was like 60%, but then I also would include, like I gave impressions, I think 10%. I think I gave engagements 15% and, and a couple of others. Um, because there's something to be no, I mean, you know, you know, there's something to be, something to be, you know, said for getting a ton of ton of impressions. You know, student, a student who did, I think it was this student here, or whoever it was. I had a student that just delivered a ton of impressions. I don't, maybe it wasn't this course. It was another course where they had like twenty thousand impressions, and I looked, and they did twice as many posts as everybody else. Um. I wasn't going to give them a failing grade or even a B because of that, because they didn't realize um, how, you know, the fact that, it, that they posted, they posted so much that it eventually got to be um, just kind of repetitive. And yeah, you need to know that in your, in your uh, career. And, and I talked through that in my recap lecture, but they, they aren't going to, you know, I'm not going to knock somebody for spending way more time and effort in that. You know what I mean? So um, that was about it. I mean, I, um, and then I ended up, you know, I, I, it really depended on what their, their weighted average score turned out to be. And then I just grouped them into, you know, clusters and assigned grades based on that. So um it was completely numerical. It was, uh, but I also told them like, Hey, like where you fall in the rank, cause they can see where they, they are here. You know, that's not, that does not necessarily mean that that's the, the, the grade you're getting, you know, if you finish with a rank of 10, that doesn't mean you're going to be, or whatever the halfway point is, say there's 38 of us. You know, if you finish 19th, that doesn't mean you're getting a 50%. That also doesn't mean you're getting a 75% or even an 80%. It really depends on how close all of you are together. You know, I am going to weigh these different things. And I told them what the weights were going to be ahead of time too, so that they knew. But, you know, for me, it was just of the utmost importance that they understood each round, like, hey, don't like your rank is not the be all end all about this. And as long as you do all the rounds, like even if you finish last, you're not going to fail. Like these, these numbers are not, I mean, I don't know why they don't have five stars and as much uh, customer uh, satisfaction might be a might be poorly written posts, but they're still bringing in some revenue. It's not like it's not for a lack of trying that they finished last. So, um, that's about it. You know, I don't want to take any more time. I've been talking on this for a while. Um, I'm happy to. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, and I can share some share some details on. Um, how, you know, how best to a, a, a address the creative side. Um, you know, I just threw some text up there. Obviously you want to be concise. Um, what I did, you know, I, I, I promoted one post and I got, did pretty good. You know, I got 8,000 in one post. So I'm sure if I had actually allocated all of my, you know, done like four others like that, I, I'm sure I could have gotten out of the basement there in that first round. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's about it. I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. I know my overview of the Mimic intro uh, has actually gotten a, a few more views than I would have expected. So um, if you do have questions, please feel free uh, to ask me. You can always leave a comment and um, you know, be, be sure to share. If, and I'm sorry, this won't necessarily apply to students because this is more for the professor side. But if you would like more of a walkthrough for students, I'm happy to provide that as well. Um, but student does have that. They they have that in the first round. They have a little video embedded. 
um, that you would pull up. So I would recommend looking at that first and then I can provide some secondary backup if necessary. So um, thanks for uh, thanks for viewing this if you did view it to be to this long and uh, we'll see you next time.